Welcome to Pathways. I'm Dr. Kate Hetherington, President of Howard Community College. Honors programs stimulate intellectual curiosity and offer students opportunities to learn inside and outside the classroom. In these supportive environments, students develop their leadership skills, travel abroad, engage in research, and give back to the community. At HCC, these programs have contributed to the college's sustained increase in the number of students completing their associate degrees. Let's hear more about honors at HCC. Professor Stacy Korbelak wanted her honors English students to gain practical, real-world knowledge. So she came up with the idea of the classroom courtroom. We collect cases that are traveling through some sort of appeals process, so maybe they've gone to the State Court of Appeals or maybe they've gone on to even the Supreme Court. And they're typically cases that have, you can see both sides very well. And we split my students up. So we've got four students per case. They actually write a court brief uh, as something they would submit to a judge if they were really attorneys going to court. So they get to debate the actual case. Classes like these are typical in the three honors programs at Howard Community College. I think what I enjoy about the honors, teaching the honors students is just helping them sort of find their pathway to success. You know, what is it that's sparking their interest? Teaching them to love learning and, and critical thinking and inquiry and then hopefully help them find their place. It helps me uh, see the world. It's not my own little bubble. I see what's happening to other people. HCC's STEM Scholars Program is open to current HCC students as well as high school graduates interested in STEM majors. The program strives to offer out-of-the-box learning experiences both inside and outside the classroom. STEM has a big emphasis on field trips because there are a lot of STEM fields which people are not aware of. Even students who are going in, they'll say, I want to be an engineer. They have no idea at the many, many different kinds of engineering that is out there. We go to facilities like the FDA. We go to the Cryptologic Museum. We'll go to the Baltimore Tool Bank and help out. We'll just do a whole bunch of different things that a normal student wouldn't have access to or even know about. And I think part of my mission uh, as a faculty member is to get kids seeing that, yeah, STEM stuff can be fun and um, to push them to explore a little bit further. The Rouse Scholars is an honors and leadership program aimed at recent high school graduates. Like the STEM program, Rouse Scholars are grouped in cohorts where they get to know their fellow honors students a little better. I have this group of friends that I, like, I had, didn't really like plan to have. We did a volunteering activity before the school year started, I have most of my classes with them. And I don't know, it just clicked and we're like actually really good friends. And the Shane Bros Scholars is the most flexible honors program, allowing students to design their own honors experience. So if you maybe need to leave at noon and, and get to work, then you can still be in the honors program and take honors classes in the morning and then head off to your job. Because they need the flexibility, maybe they could partner with a professor and do an independent study contract for some of their coursework. For students, working more closely with faculty is one of the highlights of participating in honors. They're very supportive. I can go to them whenever I need anything. Basically, they just want us to learn to work together and to be able and to present certain topics so that we're not afraid to stand up and be a leader. I like how they treat me like an adult. I really like when they treat me as responsible because it makes me work even harder to like fulfill like that role. Here to talk about the difference honors can make in students' lives is the Senior Director of Academic Engagement, Dr. Matt Van Hoos, and honor student, Naomi Narat. Welcome to you both. Thanks for having us. Matt, there are many opportunities to experience honors offerings at HEC. Why is that important for students? Sure. I think it's probably most helpful to think about our approach to honors in the light of the college's broader mission, which is creating pathways to success. And it's not an accident, I think, that we talk about pathways in the plural rather than one single pathway. That's a reflection of that rich variety of experiences and backgrounds and academic and professional goals that our students bring to their studies with us. So from an honors standpoint, what we're working to do is make sure that 
whoever you are, wherever you're coming from, and wherever you're trying to go, there's an honors pathway for you uh, if you meet certain academic requirements and if what you're looking for is that added rigor and challenge and depth academically that really all of our honors offerings are designed to provide. What a wonderful opportunity for our students. Thank you. Naomi, what has been your experience in the honors program? Yes, so my experience has been wonderful. I started taking classes at HCC when I was in high school and I was a homeschooler and my parents and I wanted something that would kind of be able to, you know, gauge whether or not I was ready for college. And so I started taking classes as a junior and when I reached my senior year, that's when we started to look into the honors programs. And we wanted something that was flexible because I'm a nursing major and I wanted something laid back yet still academically rigorous. And so we spoke to the director, Professor Kay, and she's the one who said, you know, you can join in high school and you can take the classes that you want. And I applied, got in, and I signed up for my first honors course, which was General Psych Honors 101 with Professor Schuler. And the whole experience was wonderful because I was surrounded by students who were academically driven and also Professor Schuler, like many other honors professors, sought to make the class both challenging and interesting at the same time, which was very encouraging and it really just set the foundation for my entire honors experience. Well, that's a wonderful story and to hear that you're a nursing major, which is rigorous in its own, mm -hmm. uh, to add on with honors courses is really impressive. Thank you. Matt, I imagine some students are reluctant to participate in honors programming. How is honors different from what students may expect? It's a great question, and I would really point to, to two factors that tend to be, I think, welcome surprises to our students who get involved in honors. Uh, the first thing is that students often think that honors course is kind of a synonym for just more work, hmm. uh, and that's actually not the case. Um, our honors courses aren't built to add quantity of work to students' kind of dockets. You know, rather, they're designed to engage students in a qualitatively different kind of learning you know, a kind of learning that gives students more independence and lets them take more initiative in relation to topics that really interest them. Uh, so through assignments like, for example, group or individual research projects, just to name one. Uh, and so the idea there is, again, to, to let students push a little bit further rather than uh, just giving them more work. And then the second thing I would point to uh, is that students often think that honors is just about that increased rigor in the classroom. And obviously that's a big part of it. Um, but our approach to honors here at HCC really places uh, special emphasis on what are oftentimes referred to as high impact practices. So these are things like service learning, like global and international education and study abroad, like internships. These opportunities that let you start to explore how the concepts that you're encountering in the classroom resonate and, and have meaning out there in the real world. Uh, and so those types of experiences are really woven into all that we do with honors here. Um, HCC has frankly been a leader in those types of programs uh, for many years and so they really end up being a hallmark for all of our honors students. So it's about the books for sure, uh, but it's really about a lot more. So it's a nice combination of theory and um, experiences Absolutely. that students have to uh, live what they're learning in the classroom. Absolutely. Good, yeah. good. Naomi, how has participating in an honors program enhanced your educational experience? It really has enhanced my learning. Um, and I would mainly attribute that to the professors who've taught me. And, you know, it's one thing to take a class and enjoy it, but it's another thing when you have a professor who's truly motivated to teach you and really puts in that effort and really interacts with you. And I can name all the professors I've had in the honors program and it really just means a lot. Professor Schuler, Professor Flesher, Professor Nicodemus, Professor May, and it really just was so encouraging to see that they were just as motivated as I was to teach the content and everything that they were passionate about. And there are various ways as to how to gain honors credits, which I really enjoyed because as a Shane Brot Scholar, I have to complete 15 honors credits. And I did that through various means, through regular honors courses, independent contracts, and also a study abroad trip through service learning. And with the 
independent contracts, I really bumped up my honors experience last spring semester when I did two independent contracts and a regular honors course in another class. And independent contracts basically allow you to sign up for a course and work with a professor to gain that H on your transcript. And I really liked that because the courses I wanted to take weren't necessarily honors per se, but I was able to make them honors by, you know, doing a project or a presentation or something to gain that credit. And it was so nice because I got to know my professors very well, but I was also able to retain and understand the information that I was learning, which was very, very encouraging and I appreciated it a lot. The other means is the alternative spring break trip and that I didn't know was an honors credit initially and when I came home I was so excited to hear that I could write about it and talk about how not only humbling but how wonderful the whole trip was to be with HCC students outside of HCC itself and it was really nice to see how we worked together and really made an impact as to where we went and served. And the last is Phi Theta Kappa, which is the International Honor Society here. And that reinforces everything that I've learned with Shane Brote and the Honor Society in general. And it's given me opportunities to practice leadership skills and community engagement. We're working on our Honors in Action project. And that just, you know, as a student, we kind of get wrapped up into our lives and just study all the time. But it's nice to step outside of that and be in an environment that promotes academic excellence and also in a place where we can just go out and serve and, you know, solve real world issues and just take a chance and go out there and just be with others who hold the same mindset. So all of these things have just enhanced my learning very well. Well, that's, um, um, you know, incredible response. And I have to say, I'm um, inspired by your motivation you. and uh, your definite service, service to others because not only are you into nursing, but also the alternative spring break is really a time for students to get connected mm -hmm. to serving others, whether it's in our community or outside. So thanks for doing that. Thank you. And thank you both for joining me today. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for having us. Honors at HCC takes many different forms. Students are eligible to join the college's Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society chapter if they've taken 12 college level credits and earned a 3.5 grade point average or higher. For student Greg Howard, membership in Phi Theta Kappa led to national recognition and scholarship support. Greg Howard has been named a New Century Workforce Pathway Scholar and he'll receive $1,250 for his studies. Only one scholar was selected from each state. The award is the first of its kind to support community college students who plan to enter the workforce once they get their degree or certificate. And that's just what Greg plans to do. He earned a certificate in cardiac monitoring at HCC and is working toward an associate degree in cardiovascular technology. When I set out to try to find a, a career, right, I, I chose something that I knew you know, where I could be of value, uh, which was the medical field. This school was the only one that carried the program that I wanted, which was cardiovascular technology. Not every school carries it. Outside of the classroom, Greg works part-time as a landscaper and volunteers as a counselor to men battling addiction and homelessness in Baltimore. But even though he was an outstanding student, Greg wasn't thinking about applying for any scholarships. I was uh, hesitant to uh, kind of put myself out there to submit any applications for awards or anything like that. That's very foreign, very far away from, uh, from what I've been accustomed to. But then HCC faculty members convinced him to join Phi Theta Kappa or PTK. Greg is not only a great student, he's a great person. He spends so much of his time mentoring and counseling other students and other uh, people outside of HCC. I knew that PTK was great when it came to service and that fit in really well with Greg's life. Greg's life has been filled with service to others. I also knew that uh, being a member of PTK and, and getting involved with it would up your chances for scholarships. Greg was pushed along by Professor Weprecht and Dr. Megan Myers, who was faculty advisor to PTK at the time. And so we were team Greg and we, we could see the potential in this student and we really wanted him to rise to the occasion. And together they just kind of tag teamed, <laughs> just went at, you know, went at me uh, to get me to submit applications for um, scholarships. Their work paid off for Greg and for that he's very grateful. They kind of uh, saw in me what I was not able to see in myself. Now, as a result of doing that, I kind of see what they see. And that's changed me as a person. To learn more about honors at HCC, visit howardcc.edu forward slash honors.
Learning at home. Learning in the classroom. Learning for success. For learning that works for you, choose Howard Community College. To find courses and programs that fit your schedule and learning style, visit hcclearningworks.com. You can get there from here. It's been a record-breaking year at Howard Community College. The Chronicle of Higher Education has named Howard Community College a great college to work for, for the 10th consecutive year. HCC is the only Maryland Community College and one of only two community colleges across the country to receive this honor every year possible. The Great Colleges to Work For survey is the largest and most comprehensive workplace survey in higher education. The primary factor in determining whether an institution receives recognition is the employee feedback. The Washington Monthly has named Howard Community College as one of the nation's best two-year colleges for adult learners for the third year in a row. Howard Community College came in at number 20 on the list, with high scores for ease of transfer, flexibility of programs, and services for adult students. We are the only community college in Maryland to have earned a spot in the top 20 every year since the rankings began. The Association of Community College Trustees recently presented HCC with one of its highest awards, the Charles Kennedy Equity Award, at its 2018 Leadership Congress. The award recognizes outstanding commitment by a community college board and CEO to achieve equity in the administration and delivery of educational programs and services. The award honors leadership in setting policies that promote and enhance opportunities for institutional diversity, inclusion, and equity. HCC has had a diversity plan in place nearly 30 years. At the heart of all these recent honors for HCC is its mission of providing pathways to success. For students, this means providing new and innovative opportunities to learn. HCC engineering students designed and built a unique musical playground. When it's time for recess at the Children's Learning Center, the students make a beeline to the musical playground. This interactive area was the brainchild of the then director of the Children's Learning Center, Kim Pins. Music is a great um, avenue of learning for children and they are able to do so many more things than if you're inside reading a book. It's an opportunity to express their emotions. It's an opportunity for children who learn kinesthetically to participate and learn. The whole songs and singing and dancing are all different ways that are um, enhanced reading skills and math skills. The playground was designed and built by HCC engineering students. We knew from her that she was interested in having some musical playground equipment and that she was willing to involve students, engineering students. She presented us with this idea, with this problem, and that was the starting point for engineering students to start designing. Brooks Wiggs is one of three students who took part in the project. We really wanted to give them something that was fun and that they would enjoy for a long time and not just, you know, play once, be that new toy, and then forget about. Our goals for this project were to try to provide the Children's Learning Center with what they felt the kids would most enjoy playing with. So our engineering students interviewed the director here and they also interviewed some of the children to find out what they would enjoy and what they wanted in this piece of equipment. Projects like this one give HCC students the opportunity to design, build, and deliver real products to real clients. It also comes with an added bonus, the satisfaction of a job well done. It is fantastic to see the children play with it. Um, we worked really hard on it, so it just feels amazing and it makes everything worth it. The musical playground was made possible by a grant from the PNC Foundation as part of the PNC Grow Up Great Early Childhood Education Initiative. Additional support for the project was provided by Harkins Builders, Columbia Association, Horizon Foundation, Design Collective, Rotary Club of Columbia, and District Rotary Grant. Thank you to all of our generous donors. The HCC campus is buzzing with excitement over its latest addition, a new beehive. The bees came from Georgia, about 10,000 of them, and they're here on a mission to pollinate a community garden on campus. Our goal with the honeybees is to pollinate the, the flowers and the fruits and vegetables in the area 
and also to be able to use the honey in my classroom and for the baking program and also the culinary program. The beehive came courtesy of the Honey Bee Conservancy, a bee conservation organization which awarded HCC a sponsor a hive grant. We got the hive, the tools, a bee suit, and the bees themselves, so we got everything we needed to get started. HCC faculty are being helped out by the Howard County Beekeepers Association, which offered a course in beekeeping as well as a mentor. It's been great so far, it's been very uh, welcoming, and we're really excited about their program. Although most of it will be used in the classroom, the leftover honey will go to the HCC Food Pantry as well as the Student Learning Restaurant on campus. Learning at home. Learning in the classroom. Learning for success. For learning that works for you, choose Howard Community College. To find courses and programs that fit your schedule and learning style, visit hcclearningworks.com. You can get there from here. Howard Community College is launching its first ever apprenticeship program in heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and refrigeration. In partnership with the Heating and Air Conditioning Contractors of Maryland, the college will provide classroom and hands-on training for the next generation of contractors. To talk more about this exciting opportunity is Adrian Summers, Continuing Professional Education Coordinator. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Adrian, why is apprenticeship training a priority in today's workforce? Apprenticeship is actually an on-the-job training opportunity, and with the high cost of education, it's much easier for students to be able to go into an opportunity such as apprenticeship, where they're receiving on-the-job training and being able to work in a career field that they desire to be able to work in and to receive the training. Um, employers have the opportunity to mold their apprentice um, for the job tasks that they have for their position, as well as you know, they, the students will actually have the opportunity to be paid for on-the-job training. In addition, there is a classroom component, and currently our HVAC program is a four-year program, 2,000 hours per year, so it's a total of 8,000 hours um, for this particular training. So what will the actual training experience be like at HCC? The training experience for the HVAC experience is typically the student, again, is going to be able to attend four years, two years, or the first, um, first year it's 2,000 hours of on-the-job training in addition to a related classroom experience. The related classroom experience is where the student will be attending HCC two evenings per week, so they still have the opportunity to work during the day. Um, during year one, they're not required to work for an HVAC contractor. However, by year two, they will be required to be able to have that work experience. Um, we um, will be offering the cohort, the next cohort will start September of 2019. Um, although we do have a special cohort, because of our overwhelming response from our first cohort, we are doing a special cohort that's going to start December the 1st and continue on Saturdays until June 1st of this year. So that's an opportunity for students who may be trying to do a career switch to be able to attend HCC for their training in the HVAC um, apprenticeship. And how, how large is the typical cohort size? Typically, it's about 20 students. Um, that is what it's uh, typically. And each student will actually be paired and be able to work with an, a local HVAC employer. It's such a great opportunity. So this is the first ever program of its kind at HCC. So what does the future hold for apprenticeship training? The future holds, obviously, with our HVAC training. We'll have our next cohort starting um, in December, and then we'll have another one in um, next fall. So the application will start July the 1st. In addition, we're offering a brand new construction management apprenticeship that we're in the process of developing. The cohort will begin either this summer or the fall of 2019. And as a result of, obviously, the on-the-job training, 
and the classroom training, a student will end up with approximately 34 academic credits that they can use towards their AAS degree here at HCC. Um, we are always looking for other opportunities for apprenticeship, not only in the traditional trades occupations, but we're looking for other opportunities that may entail non-traditional occupations for HCC. Well, there's a lot of opportunities out there, and we're so pleased that you're at the helm of this. So thank you for all the good work that you do, and thanks for being here today. Thank you. With galleries, theaters, and classrooms, the Harwood Center educates students and the community. The spaces also provide inspiration, and in the case of one alumna, they also provided her with a goal, to one day exhibit at HCC. Nicole Parker found inspiration in the galleries and the classrooms at Howard Community College. A homeschooled student, she turned to the college to enrich her high school lessons and to pursue her passion for art. And I definitely wanted to pursue art at a higher level, and it was hard to do that within the homeschool community because there just weren't a ton of opportunities for it. This was a great place for me to sort of develop my technical skill set, and I think that was an important thing for me to do early on because I think technical skills in, as an artist are really important because without those, even if you have sort of conceptual goals in the future, it's hard to realize those without the technical toolbox that you need. The fine arts faculty nurtured her passion and honed her skills throughout her high school career. She went on to the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts in Philadelphia and returned to HCC to share her passion with current students. During her visit, her art caught the eye of gallery director Thomas Engelman. Im immediately, I, I was captivated by the quietness of her paintings and prints and just kind of the meditative overall feel I got from them and uh, just felt really strongly about having her here. Having her back here is great for the college, I think for her kind of reflectively and, you know, it gives the students kind of an idea of where they can go and what they can do like, once they leave this institution. In her first exhibit at HCC, Parker seeks to capture places and things that reflect the small yet quiet moments in a very big and loud world. Her current body of work is inspired by childhood memories, recent travels, and transitions from one home to another. Most of the imagery is divided between either like a rural landscape or an urban landscape, and I think that dichotomy is something that I wanted to emphasize a lot. I decided to title it um, Places Called Home, and I think that sentiment is meaningful to me because uh, my home situation has just been like here and there for a couple of years. I grew up in Howard County and then like Center City, Philadelphia for college and then now I'm back in Howard County again. And it takes a lot of adjusting and I think that sort of um, feeling of being uprooted is definitely something that I was trying to touch on. For Parker, the exhibit is like coming home. She's showing her work in the very same gallery that featured artists she admired as a student. She hopes her work will provide similar inspiration to today's students. I think it's really um, exciting and meaningful for me to be able to be here and do something that I saw so many people do myself as a student, you know, and to look up to those people. It's exciting. It's a good feeling. Yeah. What an amazing body of work for such a young artist. Well, that wraps up this edition of Pathways. Thank you for joining me.